Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. And I'm back for another little bookish vlog today. A little, a little bookish vlog. Um, I wasn't gonna do one today, but I finished this book last night and I finished it in one, like two settings actually, one day. And um, it's not a long book, it's real short. But I wanted to talk about it and on the heels of me doing my haul yesterday, because it's one of the books that I hauled. But I first wanted to talk about, um, <laughs> that sounds so funny, doesn't it? It's one of the books that I hauled. Can we just talk about my new Starbucks cup that I got? It's the red matte Starbucks cup. I'm obsessed with it. Anyway, I also just reviewed the Andy's Mint Frappuccino. Um, okay, on my review channel, so go check that out. I'm also doing um, a major giveaway on my review channel, so you might want to go check that out. That was from yesterday's video about bad movie review Mondays. So anyway, um, I am currently, as I am driving around, listening to a Ready Player Two. I have to tell you guys, okay, I this is probably, uh, I would say, one of my top three most anticipated releases of 2020, if not when I heard that it was coming out, my most anticipated read of 2020, and or a release of 2020. I was so excited for this book to come out. And I don't know what I expected. I don't know if, you know, it's been so long since I read Ready Player One that I didn't really remember or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's that, you know, I've been reading all these cozy mysteries, which the depth of, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. And this is not a put down because I really, really enjoy them. But the depth of like intellectualism and philosophical ideas is, uh, I mean, there's still witty rapport, but there, you know, I don't know. It just, it's Ready Player Two is much deeper, obviously, than these cozy mysteries that I read. So I was kind of not prepared for that. Um, you really, really, I really, really am finding myself having to listen to it, like, very closely so that I don't miss anything that's going on. Um, so if you read Ready Player One, Ready Player Two picks up pretty soon after that. And um, it's about them, well, it, it's hard to talk about because there's another journey that they have to go on. There's another kind of thing that they have to find. And um, I have to tell you, there's like a lot of background that he goes into, like, it starts and then it kind of skips forward like three years or something, I think. And I was a little confused at the beginning. But anyway, so at the part that the book mostly takes place, you're like three or four years ahead of where the last book ended. And um, it literally, you guys, took me like three and a half hours on the Audible version, which it's narrated by Will Wheaton and it's fantastic. The narration is really, really good. But it literally took me like three and a half hours to get into and to really, okay, here we go. I knew I shouldn't film it from this while I was driving over here because it was going to get really dark, but whatever. Um, it really, it, it literally took me like three and a half hours to get into and really start enjoying. And I was like, <sighs> This is crazy, like I can't believe, it doesn't usually take me that long to get into a book. And especially like recently, reading the Janet Deleon Misfortune books, like I have like out of the gate, just like 10 minutes into the book, I'm loving it, right? And I really almost thought about DNFing this book a couple times because I was like, I'm just not enjoying it. Maybe it's just where I'm at with like my reading um, tastes right now that I don't wanna read Ready Player Two. I don't know what it was. But something happened last night and I passed about the three hour, three and a half hour mark on the Audible and uh, version of it. And it got really, really good. It like, all of a sudden it's like, dun, 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 boom, like that. And it just gets really good all of a sudden. And I feel like it picked up its speed. I almost kind of feel like, well, the background information that Ernest Klein gives at the beginning of the novel is important to understand what's going on. But at the same time, like, I think maybe it didn't need as much of it as he puts in there. I would have maybe said half of that. Um, and it goes in there and it talks about uh, his interactions, Wade's interactions with um, H, Shoto, and Artemis. And where they're at now and their relationships now. And their relationships have greatly changed. And even though they're like the four owners and things like that. But he's ultimately the main owner um, and controller. So it's very interesting 
kind of how he like mixed up the relationships. So I'm now currently at about the five, almost the five hour mark and it's really good. It's like really, really good. It feels like I'm reading Ready Player One all over again. Like with the, it's like a, you know, it was action, thriller, all that kind of stuff. It's very much like that all over again. So that's where I'm at with Ready Player Two. I would, if you liked Ready Player One, I would recommend it, but you're just gonna have to hang in there for the first, you know, I don't know, the first, I would say, well, third of the book, because um, it's gonna take you that long probably to get into it if you're like me. So I wanted to talk about this book that I finished last night. So I am trying to really read like some graphic novels this year. So I was going through the Goodreads Awards for 2020 and I was, you know, making my votes for what I thought were the best, you know, science fiction, the best young adult, the best this, the best that, the best romance and all that kind of stuff. And it came to graphic novels, and I hadn't read any of the graphic novels for this year. So I was like, well, I want to read some graphic novels. And one of the um, graphic novels that was up, it made it to the final round, was Alice Oseman's Heartstoppers Book 2. Now, this is Alice Oseman's Heartstopper Book 1, okay? And it is fantastic. It is so good. And I don't know why I think it's because kind of like some of the language well first of all the language is very true to I, I think I kind of fell in love with Alice Oseman's writing through this graphic novel last night but anyway she explains in here that when she wrote uh, Solitaire which was about Tori Tori's brother Charlie it, and his uh, boyfriend Nick are kind of like off character. She explains this at the end of the book. And right here, it's, uh, where is it at? She talks about it here in the author's note. I read all of it, it's right here, it's all of it. But she goes in there and she talks about how Charlie and uh, Tori's brother and his boyfriend Nick were kind of like side characters in Solitaire. But she had always wanted to devote like a whole storyline to them because she loved these characters and when she was like in school, she would write all these cartoons about them or graphic novels, but you know, she would do these comics of them or whatever, drawings and storylines. And so she wanted to devote like a whole storyline to them. So she actually had like, you know, like on online stuff devoted to this and then she turned it into um, a book, which very much reminds me of, like, that's her true story, right? Which very much reminds me of Francesca Zappia, um, oh, what's the book? God, I love that book so much, about the girl that draws the online, uh, thing, fanfic, and then all these people are, like, fans of it. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's Not Made You Up. That's her second book, and I haven't read that. Um, oh, shoot. What is that, Frances? Um, Eliza and the Monsters. Eliza and the Monsters. Such a great book. It reminds me of that, but, like, true, st like, the graphic novel doesn't, but, like, uh, Alice Oseman's story reminds me of that. Like, her true story. So, anyway... I started this book last night because I was just like, okay, I want to kind of see how it is doing. I was like uploading my uh, videos and stuff. So I started reading it and I honestly, like it was such a quick read anyway, because you can just like tear right through it. It's like 300 pages or something. I honest to God could not put this down. Like I talked about this yesterday in my video, but if books like this existed when I was in high school, I would not have felt so all alone. Like this book is so important. And it's about this guy, Charlie, and he's gay, and he's out. And he's basically been outed, is what's happened, because he told some people, and then they told everybody else. And so he goes to an all-boys school in England, and um, he has this guy that he kind of, like, makes out with, but, like, he's this guy's secret. Like, this guy doesn't want anybody to know. And so then he becomes friends. I mean, you know this going into it that it's going to be a romance because that's kind of like the whole series. He meets this guy, Ben, who is, or Nick, Ben is the, the, the side piece, so to speak. He, uh, well, he's Ben's side piece is really the truth. And it's really kind of, that storyline is sad and really reminds me of, I talked about it in my vlog last night. Oh my God, there was a pink, uh, uh, 
soft pink uh, Jeep Wrangler. That was beautiful. Anyway, it reminds me of a story that I like that happened to me in high school that was just really, really difficult and still is difficult looking back on. But she did such a fantastic job, I think, of really speaking the language of those characters at that age. I mean, they're they're their dialogue is very honest to that age group, you know? And there's cursy words in there and stuff like that, if you're offended by that. Um, I say cursy words because that's what uh, the YouTuber Emily D. Baker says, cursy words. But anyway, um, and... I don't know, I just, I really loved this story and I'm really mad I didn't buy the second one because I would like to start reading the second one right away. And when I was online, it had like, you could buy all three of them and stuff like that when I was on Amazon. So anyway, he becomes friends with this guy named Nick, who's basically like his lab partner in a class kind of thing. And then um, he and Nick form this friendship and he starts playing rugby because Nick asks him to because Nick's like this rugby star. And then they develop this friendship. But it's very sweet and very innocent. And it's kind of like questioning of sexuality. And there's a lot of like really serious issues that are going on in this book. And at the same time, like... Like, even parents' interaction is part of this and family interaction. But it's done in such a way, either homophobia by peer groups is addressed in this. It's just, it's done so fantastically. It's done so fantastically. And um, there's three books in the series so far. The third one is coming out, I think, February 5th. January 5th or February 5th, and I pre-ordered it. The second one I ordered, and it's coming on Tuesday. And you better bet I'll be reading the whole thing in, on one day, because I'm so excited about reading. I want to read the second one. It just, first of all, Alice Oseman, I don't, if you're watching this, which I'm sure she's not, I don't know what you were thinking by just ending this story at a very critical point. Okay, basically, it's literally like the conflict of the story. It happens, and then she just ends it. And then she's like, for a sneak peek. And I was like, well, of course I want a sneak peek. I want to know what happens and then it just like she shows like a couple pages of what the next book is and then it just ends and I'm like this is such crap Alice Oseman I want to know what happens but anyway it's really really good I would highly recommend it so if you guys are wanting to ease yourself into a graphic novel or if you like graphic novels anyway and you want one that's you know LGBTQIA plus uh, themed. This is definitely a great one, um, and it's called Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Here it is again. It's the drawings are great inside of it. It really reminds me of like my friends and I drawing cartoons back and forth to each other, like in notes when we were in high school. So, anyway, I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.